In this lecture example, we look at the basics around dividends. Right, so we're focusing on the section one definition. Quickly, as a reminder, when a company makes a distribution to its shareholders, that distribution can either be contributed tax capital or a dividend. Okay. So below is a list of distributions made by different companies. You are required to indicate if it's a dividend, what the dividend amount is, calculate the dividend's tax on this. And you may assume that 100% of the shareholders are natural persons. That's important. Section 64F tells us situations where the shareholders will not be liable for dividends tax. So for example, if the shareholder is a South African company, there's no dividends tax. If you are a natural person, there will be dividends tax. So I'm trying to just indicate to you that in all instances, the shareholder does not stop this from being a dividend. Distribution 1. X Limited is a company that is listed on the JSE. Okay, that's important. Watch out. It has a million shares in issue. X Limited bought back 10% of the shares and paid 5 rands per share, of which 1 rand per share is contributed tax capital. So 5 rands. So this is how it usually works. You would say 1 rand is contributed tax capital and 4 rands is a dividend. But if it is a listed company, if you go and look at the definition of a return of capital, and if you go and look at the definition of a dividend, they tell you both these amounts when it's a listed company, they will not be contributed tax capital and they will not be a dividend. They don't have any effect there. Okay, look at the next one. XP2 Limited is a company of a million shares, bought back 10% of the shares and paid 5 rands per shares. It is not a listed company, guys, because it's a private company. Again, it doesn't mean if it's a limited, like a limited year, it's going to be a listed company. They have to tell you that. But remember, a P2Y limited can never be a listed company. Okay, so now they tell you they buy 5 rands a share, which 1 rands per share is contributed tax capital. So 5 rands a share, 1 rands is contributed tax capital, and 4 rands must be a dividend. Right, they're buying back 100,000 shares, so the dividend amount, 4 rands times 100,000 equals 400,000 rands. The dividend tax portion is then 400,000 times 20% equals 80,000. From the shareholder's perspective, when they do their RANDS calculator, calculation, the taxable income, shareholders, what will they say? Dividend? 400,000 guys. Remember the amount before tax and the full amount will be exempt. What will happen to that one RANDS contributed tax capital? Well, we're not going to look at that right now. But it, there is a treatment to it. For now, focus on dividends. Distribution 3. A Limited declared a dividend of 6 rands per share to its shareholders. It has 10,000 shares in issue. Nice. So that full amount will be subject to dividends tax. Distribution 4. D Limited made a distribution of 4 rands per share in respect of its 20,000 shares. The directors have indicated that 1 rands 50 of the distribution is CTC. So 4 rands. If 1 rands 50 is CTC, then 2 rands 50 must be a dividend. Right, so distribution 4. There we go. Then we multiply by 20%. Very easy. Distribution 5. Elements has 100,000 shares in issue. It issued capitalization issue of one share for every two shares held to its shareholders. This resulted in an additional 30 shares being 50,000 shares being issued. The value of each share is 2 rands per share. So they went debit, retained earnings, and credit capital with 100,000 rands. Is that a dividend, guys? No. The definition of a dividend specifically tells you that it's excluded. Distribution 6. F Limited is a company that manufactures soft drinks. It has recently developed a new type of soft drink. It distributed one six-pack of the soft drinks to each of its shareholders. The total market value of all the soft drinks distributed were 100,000 rands, and the cost to F Limited was 60,000. This 100,000 rands over there, guys, is a dividend. Okay? It's a dividend. So times 20%, 20,000 rands. What's important about this? I'm just going to remind you. This company gives 100,000 rands dividend in specie. Very important, I want you to remember. 
SOS will get 20,000 rands. Now, how much does the shareholder get? Now, guy and guys, very often, usually, if this was a cash dividend, the shareholder would get the 80,000 rands. But this is not a cash dividend. This is a dividend in specie. The company can't take 20% of the six packs of cool drinks that's given and give that to SARS. So the company will give 100,000 rands to the shareholder. So what I want you to see is this company, in effect, has had 120,000 rands flowing out of it. If it was an, as a, a cash dividend, then the shareholder would receive 80,000 and the total flowing out of the company would be 100,000, so it would be equal. So that means who is liable? If it's a cash dividend, the shareholder is liable because they take the knock. And if the dividend is specie, the company is liable because they take the knock.